in our very last match of the day, unless, as Renegade pointed out while I had my screen up, it is a tie. Um, in the top right-hand corner, it's the Red Terran player representing T Gosu B. It is Elite Slayer. And in the top left-hand corner, it's the Orange Zerg from Risen Competitive, Stalix. Yeah, and again, Year Zero. A very odd map. Um, and, you know, we've mentioned that Stalix likes his Mutt Mutts. And we haven't seen them yet. And I'll tell you what, if there was ever a map to go for Mutas, I think it's Year Zero. Yeah. Um, so, Squid Boy in the middle isn't actually flyable. You have to kind of go around him. Like, his tendrils are flyable, but not... Um, and it can be seen by this watchtower. So if Elite Slayer takes the watchtower and has an engineering play, but has an engineering bay because we know he's going bio, he might have enough time to get missile turrets up in time. But um, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Year Zero. I think for for that kind of um, push he did in game number one, I think it's. Uh, it's a little bit tougher because the angles that you can get to that third base either a run through that low ground between the nat and the third which has some great spots to engage for the zerg or you have to kind of go a loop de loop around to get to the bottom side so well, not quite as direct a route to that year zero is really interesting right because there's this very large rush distance and many many paths you can take but there's a lot of dark space and a lot of choke points where you can get caught out as the Zerg or the Terran as you're moving across the map. Yeah. Um, and if your opponent is holding that choke point and gets an arc on it, it can it can change a fight dramatically. If you have siege tanks behind the uh, behind the blind spot and you lose that vision, you're dead as the Terran. But on the other hand, if Marines are in an arc and you accidentally run your Zerg wings in the column through the choke point, it, it's it's devastating. Yeah, certainly. And interestingly enough, we see two fast barracks here from Elite Slayer rather than barracks into factory. Um, so I think this might be... Yeah. Oh, no, that's a factory. Okay, never mind. I was going to say this is going to be one of them old school three racks builds, but it does not look like that's what it's going to be after all. Oh, you need to get that injured Ling back there, Shalik. As this Reaper just kind of poking, being annoying, maybe going to try and deny that third base. Um but yeah, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what this build is going to be for Elite, but I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing wh where he goes with it. I think you can still two one one from this scenario, and that's probably what this is going to end up being. Yep. Ooh, the Reaper's going to try and get the deny off here on the third base. This is a weird little dance we got going on. Looks like the drone is going to try and. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's going to try and make the extractor. A lot of these Reaper shots going off on the Zerglings, actually. Yeah, but I think he's done it. He's successfully going to be able to deny this for now. This Reaper should clean up everything, and the SCV is still alive, so... I mean, he's gonna have to cancel this eventually. And that's really slightly inconvenient for Stalin. Oh, unless he lets this Extractor finish, which he doesn't. He's gonna let it finish, let the drone... Oh, and here come the Zerglings. And these two Lings with speed should... Should be able to get this Reaper, I think? Yeah. Okay, so eventually everything goes down, but still a nice little delay on the third base there. Yeah, almost a full minute delay. And behind this, we do have Stim. Yeah, okay, so this is just a 2 one, one This is just a dose. Uno, uno. Double gas coming in in the natural here from Stalix. And he's gone back and gas. He's going to be up on three gas pretty fast here. So we might just see... With that lair coming up, It's. I think this is either a Nidus or it's Mutus. I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty certain of this. Oh, he's going to get into the natural. I mean, he's not really going to see much. Might be able to get an SCV here. But when he sees this high of a marine count, he should know what he's facing. So Stalix dropped a single Evo chamber as well. Do you think this is like plus one melee knighted? Well, let me see. It certainly could be. Yep, there's a plus one melee. Yeah. He's getting his spores up as well. Five banelings as well back at home. But that so could just be to pre prep see... for this... 2 one, one attack. Maybe. Well, all will be made clear when the Nidus, or when not the Nidus, when the hatch, or the lair finishes. We're gonna have to see. It's counting down. And it is finished. 
Scan immediately goes down. He's going to see a lot of banelings. And it looks like here is the double drop on its way for Elite. As he's getting a third CC behind this. And it it looks like no. Look, oh, 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 that drone in the main is making something. What are you making? It's a Spire. Okay, so it's Mutas. Um, and if he can defend this, which he certainly has the army to defend this, then he can really power up drone on three bases and get... His Spire will get done, and he will be able to get to harass with those Mutas, and we'll see what he can make happen. Well, I mean, the Circling Baneling, not in position to defend a third, but... Elite Slayer's dropping right under the Overlord. So. Yeah, which this Overlord will die, but again, with all this, with all these units here, he should be able to get a pretty nice defense off on it. Ooh, even kiting pretty well, getting a lot of these Zerglings, but he's going to have to pick up soon as these Banelings are incoming. Ooh. Is he though? No, maybe not. Maybe not. All those links go down, and so far, a great trade here from Elite Slayer. But once he Important wanders on a note, creep, he's he got to be a careful. Third up behind this as well. Yeah. And still, just kiting back, using his micro very well, keeping everything alive for the most part. And oh, no, no, no. Oh, there's the hit that Stalix oh, was looking for. Yep. Yeah, and now he's safe to go back to droning, which is what he needs to do, because he really wants to get this third base powered up on drones as or behind these mutas. Yeah, and he's sending out a drone to drop a fourth as well, which is exactly what he needs to be doing at this point. Yeah, five mutas on the way, now six, along with Baneling speed, so... Really powering up to that mid game is Stalix. And again, this drop heavy style, it should kind of uh, fall in favor of the the Zerg player. Once Mutas get out, they do shut down those drops very effectively. I think that Stalix really wants to have a bunch of overlords here in this dead space area, though. As we can see, a drop is heading across, um, and he has no indication of this. And it would be so nice to be able to scout this early by having an overlord here, but now here come the marines. They're going to start to get some drone inhibition. They might even see the spire. Ooh, here come the mutas. He has to be careful. He does not want to lose them. And this is great for Elite Slayer. Yes, he loses this, but he might even get a muta. And most importantly, he's going to have time to drop turrets of his own. Oh, he's chasing down. Oh, man, he's... this Elite. Elite got a muta. Yeah, this is a great trade out because now he's also going to be getting turrets down behind this. He will not get blindsided by the mutas. That's very nice. Elite played that out very well. This drop had no no right dealing that much damage. Just Yeah, no, not at all. Um, now, the meter count is rising from here, and we are seeing Stalix power up to that 60-plus drone range. And this third base is floating over now. I think that it's a, a tiny bit late here for Elite, so Stalix will have an economic advantage at least for a little while. Um, but again, this push that we saw in the game number one with a few tanks, a lot of marines is coming, but this time, baneling speed done. There's going to be a lot of lings and a lot of banelings. And he's going to see this third base is on the way, so Stalix should have a pretty good idea of what's what's going down here. And if he can, I think he wants to get into the main, maybe not onto the mineral line, but just harass with these mutas. Keep this push at home for as long as he can while he gets his drone count up. Oh, Elite Slayer's not taking the bait. He's moving out on the map. Ooh, but this is really good timing actually here for Stalix because he's going to get in on the main. And I mean, yeah. something has to defend this. He's going to get a lot of damage done here. Definitely pick off some add-ons. Um, Missile turret's protecting the SCB line. He's not going to get... Losing tech labs, losing reactors, really, really annoying as the Terran. Yeah, but Elite Slayer sees this, and he knows he wants to go for the throat here. This army is here right now. It looks like Stalix will pull back in anticipation of this attack. Yeah, and he sees it, and he knows it's coming. Here's the siege up. I mean, Stalix is going to be coming in from two angles, though. Yeah, he split up. Extends. It's all over for Elite Slayer. Yeah, he split up. He's delaying this engagement as long as he can. Oh, he's, he's not near the tanks. He's going to oh, get at least one of them. He might even get two. Oh, I no. He, I think he gets... Yeah. Yeah, he gets nice. two of them. That's half the tanks. That's such a great totally pick. Totally for free. Yeah. And now that takes such a such a large amount of the wind out of the sails of this push that I'm not sure there, Elite Slayer can push the issue. There is not enough bio here to engage this circling bane. Like... No, there's yeah. not. And I'm not sure he can get the retreat off. Ball. Ooh, he's going to try and get a tank during the retreat too. Oh, has to back out. But here comes the army. Here comes the army. And he's going to try and siege up, it looks like, but... Ooh, 
Ooh, I'm not sure how well this is going to work out. Actually, these banelings are crashing in, but some nice splits here by Elite, but it oh, looks like... two hero marauders saved the marines here, and they're going to force the mutilisk back. Ooh, but here's oh, a lot more zerglings. So, yeah, that's, that's a lot. And he's going to be forced back home for now, but again, this fourth base is up and mining, but again, a weird upgrade contrast is we have plus three attack, plus one carapace on the way here now for Stalix. Well, one thing to note that the creep spread, again, non-existent for Stalix, and if he doesn't kill Elite Slayer soon, that's going to hurt him in the long run. But yeah. Looks like he might do it. Yeah, he's going for it. He's letting these Zerglings and Banelings distract while he tries to pick off the Medivacs, which are the backbone of this army. He's going to get a bunch of them and some of the tanks. Ooh, but I'm not sure. This is weird. This is weird, but I think that Stalix might just have done it. I mean, oh, these 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 Banelings are trying to corner this pack of Marines, but it doesn't look like they will be able to do that. Oh, no, but this third base is completely undefended from these Lings, and he needs oh, this man. mining. Well... Oh, okay. There's Zerglings in on the third. Yeah. He's done enough damage. 14, 15 SCVs go down. Oh, and counting. And with uh, the units here and the natural, he's not going to be able to get out and save this. In fact, this third might just die, which would be disastrous. Oh, oh no. Stalix is not going to kill it, it looks like. He's going to go for the engage on the army, and he might just have enough units. He needs to keep these mutas alive. He doesn't want to just sack them all. He's still building them, so he wants to let that count snowball. Oh, no, you don't want to fight this into this kind of choke. But it looks like he will anyway with these mutas. But horribly inefficient. Oh, I mean, Adrenal Glance is done, though. Are all gonna go down, but, like, yeah, Adrenal's done. The so natural much. is done. Zerg OP GG. Zerg OP GG! Alex <laughs> has taken the match and will be our second player to move on to the round of 16. Yeah. Very nicely played there from Stalix. Um, yeah, I mean, we were waiting. Um, we were waiting that whole time for for Stalix to pull out those mutas, and he waited till his back was against the wall, and it really worked out for him there. Gotta hand it to him, as he will. You know, he uh, he was one map away from making the round of eight last season, and this season he was in that same spot, and he uh, he overcame that hurdle. So good for him. You know, look forward to seeing more from him. But I think that that is all that we have for you today thank you everyone for tuning in it looks like we had a few follows as well oh elite slayer followed me and grusau 12309 followed me so thank you very much lads i appreciate it but um have a have a good night everybody renegade anything you got to say to the people before before we bounce out of here yeah uh stay tuned for the other half of the round of 16 as well as bracket play um here at caboose sc2 sc2 rathorn Gravity 620 and Renegade X Studios. Yeah, I mean, that's I'll a good point. The next one. You know, that's a good point. There's two more groups here, and if you want to see me fall flat on my face in Group D, I feel like that's going to be entertaining. But anyway, stay tuned to the Discord for updates on that, and have a fantastic evening, everybody.